air gun block mold, which is also available online in kit form. So let's measure up what quantities of ballistic gel and water we require. First thing I'm going to do is zero our mold onto our scales in grams. For our 2 litre mould we require 200 grams of ballistic gel powder. Try to make sure you're as accurate as possible when adding your gel powder and water, as these will change the consistency of your gel once it is created. I'm now going to add 1800 millilitres of cold water to the ballistic gel powder. This water has been chilled to 10 degrees centigrade. At 10 degrees centigrade, 1 milliliter of water equals 1 gram. So I'm adding 1,800 grams also, totaling 2,000 grams of both ballistic gel powder and water. It's important to make sure that your quantities are accurate when making ballistic gel. In this case I've added slightly too much water so I'm going to siphon off the right amount to make sure that I've got 2000 grams total. Once you've added the correct quantities of ballistic gel powder and water it's time to mix the two together. We're looking here to get rid of any clumps which could stop an even bloom of your gel. Mixing the gel powder and water can take a few minutes, so I'm going to fast forward this for you. When the mixing is complete and you can't find any clumps of gel powder at the bottom of your mold or container, it is now ready for blooming. To bloom your gel, place it in a fridge for two hours. Blooming is the process of hydrating your ballistic gel powder. This is a crucial step for creating an accurate ballistic gel, so try not to cut any corners by not allowing it to fully bloom. Once the blooming has completed, you can remove it from the fridge and it's now ready for melting. You should find that properly bloomed gel is a consistency of wallpaper paste. I'm now going to transfer the bloomed gel into a pan to be heated. Note, the air gun block mould used in this demo is microwavable friendly, so I could just put this in a microwave for around about 4 minutes to melt the gel also. For this demonstration I'm using a portable stove to heat my gel. Make sure the heat is not too high, as we do not want to boil the gel, we simply want to warm it. This mixture needs to be heated to 39 degrees Celsius. I know this can be a pain, but try to be as accurate as possible when it comes to the temperature. Make sure to stir your gel as you're heating it, but try to avoid mixing in any bubbles. Throughout the heating, I'm going to be monitoring the temperature with a thermometer. This process will take around five minutes, so I'm going to fast forward it for you. After 5 minutes you can see the consistency has changed, it now resembles syrup. 
Again, try to avoid mixing too much air bubbles into your gel mixture, as this could cause air bubbles in your final block. Once you are happy with the temperature of your gel, it is now time to pour it into its final mould, if you haven't already heated it in its mould. Whilst I was waiting for the gel mix to heat up, I washed out my mould to ensure there was no unmelted gel left inside. As a secret tip, you can always use surgical spirit in a spray bottle. This will break the surface tension of any bubbles and will ensure that your final gel is bubble free. When your gel is in the mould, you are now ready to cool it. Place your gel in its final mould back into the fridge for 24 hours. It is important it remains there for 24 hours. It's also a good idea to try and make sure that it's not disturbed. A good tip here is to place a piece of paper underneath your mould. This will help absorb any condensation that's generated from putting a warm gel in the fridge. After the 24 hours has passed, you can take your gel block out of its mould and it is immediately ready to use. Here are some final notes for your ballistic gel. Once you have made your gel, try to use your gel within three days. Make sure your gel is refrigerated at all times. And note, your gel is only calibrated to forensic standards whilst it is between 3.5 and 4.5.